So okay, I've got my environment set, I've got my first component in. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in more components. And I'm gonna do that through the place command. So I'll go ahead and hit place here. And the next one I'll bring in is the bracket. Now once you have brought one in, you can see that it's kind of connected to my cursor here. And I'll just left click once inside the graphics area to place one instance of it. Now you can place multiple instances of it, uh, of, of any component that you wish. And the nice thing about it is if you ch make a change to one of the instances, all of the other instances will automatically update based upon that change inside the assembly. So it's pretty handy. So I'll go ahead and right click my mouse because I only want one instance of this and I'll choose done. Now the first thing that people do when, when they see something like this is they say, oh, well, this, you know, that part isn't even oriented relative to the other component. Um, and they immediately go about calling up the rotate command to rotate an individual component. I'm going to ask, just for my own um, I don't know, sanity, that um, you bear with me and try not to use that rotate component command that's inside of Inventor because we're going to do a better, uh, we're going to do something better, um, I, I, I promise. And what we're going to do is we're going to generate the relationships between the components through constraints. All right, so the constraints are a number of different types of constraints. And basically what they do is they control the position and the animation of assembly components. So I'm going to go ahead and call up the constraint dialog box and I'll walk you through it here uh, real quickly. And just like any other dialog box inside of Inventor, if you, if you kind of read it from top to bottom, left to right, um, you'll see what it's attempting to, uh, to, to, to prompt you with. And there's a lot of feedback that goes on right at the dialog box or right at the cursor as to really uh, what it's expecting from you in terms of uh, uh, input and, and such. So if you take a look at this, you can, you can see that we have multiple types of constraints. We have mate constraints, we have angular constraints, tangent constraints, and an insert constraint. Each one of these constraints have different solutions to them. So for example, on the mate constraint, I have two opposing faces, or I have two flush faces, um, depending on, um, again, your desired solution. Inside of the tangent constraint, we have both an inside solution and an outside solution. And real quick, with the insert constraint, we have both opposed and aligned. So really, uh, going into this type of placing constraint, you kind of have to know ahead of time what you're going to do. Um, so in this example, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and align these, uh, these holes um, through a method that is called mating axes. All right, so as you can see inside of the dialog box here, I get a number of different pieces of feedback. You see this little arrow left and right and middle. And what that does is that allows you to cycle through the available selection set. So here you're going to see that it allows me to select that back face, the axis, or if I were mating the inside surfaces of the hole, that's what that uh, particular uh, input represents. But in fact, I want to uh, mate the axis, so I'll go ahead and choose the axis by clicking that middle green button. And then I'll go over to its, uh, its opposing axis that I want to mate up, and again, use the selection um, cycle tool there to cycle through my selection. And I'll go ahead and right click and choose apply. Now I'm going to uh, close the constraint dialog box here to show you that it has in fact removed one degree of freedom. Now all components are going to have three degrees of freedom, right? Um, and so far I re I've removed one of those degrees of freedom. I have a rotational degree of freedom as well as a degree of freedom that looks like uh, you know, it goes about that, uh, the axes of those two holes. So I want to remove those by adding some additional constraints. So, if I go back to my constraint dialog box here, I have the ability to go through and say, you know, I want to mate up this face to this face. And I'll go ahead and choose apply. Now I've removed two degrees of freedom and I still have the ability to rotate about the, uh, the whole uh, axis there. Now I'm going to remove that one by adding an angular constraint. If my intention is to have that thing uh, flush with another uh, another component, I'll go ahead and utilize the angle constraint uh, in order to do that. So I'll say directed angle there and uh, I want these, this top surface right here to be at a zero degree reference from that top surface right there. Go ahead and choose OK. And now I have removed all of the degrees of freedom for this component. Pretty easy, right? And I've always told people if, uh, you know, 
if you have a conversation with Inventor, um, this is always a left click. I want this surface to align with this surface at a zero angle, and every time you say this, left click your mouse. Um, every time you, you, uh, you say, I want to, right click your mouse, and generally what you're gonna want to do next is probably right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, place a component here. So if I go ahead and say place component, uh, another one I'm gonna bring in is this sleeve. Now this is the sleeve that is going to add some stiffening um, element to this, uh, this assembly as I tighten down the bolt, right? So I'll left click to place one, right click, choose done to finish placing the command. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, call up the constraint command. Now, in this example, an insert constraint is actually going to serve two purposes. Now, the insert constraint is like a, um, is like a mate constraint, but doubled, in that it does both a mate face-to-face, -face, as well as a mate axis-to-axis, -axis, um, when you have a cylindrical reference, right? So I'll go ahead and choose uh, insert constraint. I'll grab that edge and mate it up with that edge right there. Go ahead and choose OK. And as you can see, not only did it do the mate face to face, but it also aligned the axis for me. So in a situation where you have a lot of uh, um, circular uh, components, uh, an insert constraint comes in quite handy. Now I'm going to undo that just so that I can show you one of the new commands that's in Inventor 2011 that, that doesn't necessarily require you to kind of have a, uh, a preconceived notion as to what you're going to do when, when it comes to constraining, and that's the assemble command. Now the difference between the assemble command and the, and the constraint command is in how you interact with the components. With the assemble command, I'm able to go through here and just interact with the components very visually. By selecting on a round edge, you can see I can kind of float my cursor over all of the other available insert constraints that are inside of this assembly. And once I choose the one that I want, I'll go ahead and choose that edge and click OK. So rather than predetermining that this needed to be an insert constraint, I simply chose the assemble command that will automatically determine mating considerations, insert considerations, and tangencies, right? Both, and, and both the solutions too, so uh, flush, uh, aligned or impo uh, opposed when it comes to uh, uh, the insert constraint and then inside or outside tangent conditions. So um, definitely uh, mess play around with that. I, I, think, you'll, uh, I think you'll like that as, as being a, a very viable option. But of course the reason I showed you the traditional constraints was that you kind of have a, um, I think it's a requirement to have a, a good basis as to, as to um, where you're coming from here.